Hi viewers, uh, welcome back to this YouTube channel and uh, I am Hamza Meek. My today's video is related with the very first chapter of your Pakistan studies P2 that is the geography and the topic over here we have is topography of Pakistan. I have already discussed one of the topics related with this chapter. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, please kindly do watch that video. But let me show you that what topic I am talking about. Here is the topic that we have in our previous video, but we discussed this topic related with the region of highlands. This time in this video, I am going to discuss about the remaining regions of Pakistan. So let me show you that what regions I am talking about. Number one, we have our plain regions, then uh, we have deserts, and the last one would be the coastal areas of Pakistan. So we will discuss all these regions related with the economy and the lifestyle of the people living in these areas. So let's start from the very first one over here, that is the plain land areas, the plain regions of Pakistan. So let's see what first point we have over here. Gee, the agriculture one related with the plain land areas and here are the key points. So when we talk about the, the plain land areas of Pakistan, let me compare it with the highland areas. We know that the mountains, they are the steep slopes and uh, over there the agriculture is difficult to develop. That is why the people over there, they used to perform the terrace farming. They cut the mountains, create slopes and do agriculture. But over here in plain regions, as it is a flatland surface, so it is easier to develop agriculture. That is why this area, they have ample amount of land for the production of crop growth or for the further agricultural development. So this is one thing that we have just because of the flatland area, this portion have ample amount of land surface for the crop production. Second one we have over here is the fertility, the fertile area. Now this point is mainly interlinked with certain factors. Here we have few points like the tributaries of Indus, that is one factor behind it. There are certain features over there like the Arbs, old active flood plains. And a very important one is the extensive system of canals. So before I start, uh, the next one, let me clarify that, that what factors I'm talking about. If we talk about the first factor over here, that is tributaries. So when we talk about the tributaries of uh, river Indus, here we have a river system of Pakistan like this. For example, this is the Indus, that is certain tributaries over there, that is rivers related with Indus, that is Indus, that is Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi and that is Sandwich. So this portion over here is the portion of Punjab, that is Upper Indus Plain, that is Lower Indus Plain, which is Sindh. So this is one reason the tributaries over there which made this area, the plain land region, fertile. So that is one reason because of the very uh, high production of agriculture over there, just because of the availability of these rivers in these land. Then I've talked about the second thing that is related with the Doabs, old and active flood plains. So let me clarify that first of all, what Doabs are. When we talk about Doabs, so let me show you that uh, the definition, the Doabs are mainly the land areas between two rivers. So that is the definition of Doabs we have. So when I have discussed about those tributaries, so any land area between any two river would be Doabs. For example, between Indus and Jhelum, that would be Doab. For example, as we have, for example, Indus over here like this. I let me draw that once again to show you quickly. So this is the tributary that we have. This area between Indus and Jhelum, that is Doab. Chelam and Chanab, Chanab and Ravi. So these are the areas which are called as Doabs. So this is one reason behind the fertility of this land area. And the last one is the extensive system of canals. When we talk about canals, as it's a flatland area, so canal system is easier to develop. So canals usually come from the rivers or secondly, they are coming from the dams and barrages, which are also called as reservoirs. When we talk about dams, so this is how dams are built. The best place are valleys. So from here, these canals usually coming. They are also called as 
link canals or the perineal canals. So this is it with an agriculture system. Let's move towards the next one. Infrastructure of the plainland areas. Easier set settlements over here just because of the flatland area. This area is more commercialized. Why? Because over here you will find the more schools, hospitals, more industries or factories, electricity is more developed over here. So this is something which is also related with the economy of the plain land regions. So when we talk about the economy, you could simply see that the ample land for the crop growth, more agricultural production, more agriculture, more economy, the export of those weeds and rice etc that would give you more economy than if it is more easier to develop so more commercial activities over there for example if you compare it with the mountainous region over there there are less settlements less commercial activities so this is how uh, this is something which is interlinked with the economy related with the plain regions higher economy move towards the next point transport network again I would link it with the economy and lifestyle. When we talk about the lifestyle of the people, as this area is dense, having the dense network of road, rail, uh, rail and network, so the communication in this area is very much easier as compared to the mountains. Because we know that in mountains there is a single road network, there is less connectivity of the roads, and also the building structure of those roads is, is not easy. We have seen that in the previous video as well, but over here, Easier to develop routes, easier to develop rail and air network, ample, ample amount of surface over there for the airports. These areas are having the melted routes, means the cemented routes. So this is something which is also interlinked with the lifestyle or the economy of the people. So how economy? Because when we talk about the better or dense road network, it means that the communication over here is much better than any other place. So this is something which is related to the lifestyle and economy. Let's move towards the next one. Deserts. First one is agriculture, lack of vegetation, mainly related with the rainfall. As we know that the rainfall in the desert is low. Don't say that it is not, not there, but it is low. You cannot say that there is no rainfall in the desert areas. There is, but very less rainfall. So just because of the less rainfall, this area is barren, they have rugged landscape. How? Because they have sand dunes over there. You can see that in the picture as well, like here, we have sand dunes. Then the food grown only in the rainy season. So whenever there will be a water availability, only then the food would be there, food growth would be there. Oasis, these are oasis. In this picture, you could see that the water body where there is a water body in the desert area, that place would be the oasis and this area would have more settlements for any other commercial activity. Then we have cactus that is related with the vegetation of the desert area. So this is how we have agriculture over here. Moving towards the next point, nomadics. A very very important topic related with the paper point of view as well that what are basically the nomadics and what is nomadic lifestyle. So as I said, nomadic lifestyle, this is somehow which is related with the, the lifestyle of the people over there. That is lifestyle. How? Let me show you the points first, then I'll move towards the diagram. As I said, it's a desert area just because of these certain reasons, just because of the low agriculture over there, the production is low, so that is why the population is also low. Low population because of the lack of basic necessities over there. Now let's move towards the nomadic lifestyle. This is what we have over here, nomads in search of food and water along with animals and they have no permanent settlements. Let me show you with the help of a diagram. For example, this is one place where they are living, point A. As I said, they have nomadic lifestyle. So what is that? They start moving from one place to another in search of food and water, right? So that is the nomadic lifestyle, in search of food and water. So this is something they need to found. Uh, as I said, they have uh, no permanent settlements. So they start moving from A to B, then again from point B to any other point, that is C, then point C to D. So they kept on moving in search of food and water, and they have no permanent settlements. And sometimes it happens that they move back to point A as well. So this is their lifestyle, which is called as nomadic lifestyle, right? 
moving back again next point we have over here is transport over here the people they use the transport for example camels or other animals over there because when they need to move from one place to another in search of food and water they need to take the animals with them and those animals are basically used to carry their materials next we have the roads covered by sand as i said that over here they have a sand dunes so just because of the bend movement those sand dunes they cover the road network then we have uneconomical to build the roads and rail the railways why as i said that very less or low agriculture low population nomadic lifestyle basic necessities are not over there these areas have the roads covered with the sand so these all reasons are the reasons behind the economy so obviously when we talk about the economy of this area it is understood that the economy of this area is low it is not high just because of all these reasons so this is the lifestyle and economy of deserts let's move towards the next one last one is the coastal areas the first point again agriculture ground water is salty we know that the underground water is usually either salty or sweet but as we are talking about the coastal areas so the water over there is salt next we have is the mangroves this is something which is related with the vegetation so mangroves are the only one which survive over here just because they have the quality or they have a mechanization to filter the salt that is why they survive over there and they have certain qualities like they are they provide fodder for the animals like uh, the species over the water of the water like fishes they are the one who are the barriers of the floods and they also provide fodder so there is another thing the constant chance of floods there are some other threats as well like tsunami tsunami is the tsunamis and another could be the tropical cyclones because it's a coastal area in pakistan we know that the tropical uh, cyclones comes usually very rare only once a year another one is the water pollution which is over there just because of certain reasons it might be because of the tourists who are moving over there or used to visit those side of the beaches of the pakistan or the coastal areas or obviously there are certain activities which is been going on over there it might be because of the industrial wastage or uh, because of the the other wastage of the humans so these all are reasons next we have is infrastructure again uh, as i said that so i missed one point over here that is soil which is too wet so just because of this one we have a very little firm land over there to build any kind of a settlement just because the soil is very wet so it is not that strong so it is not easier to develop any kind of settlement over there or any factories over there so that is why just because of the wet soil it would create problem tourism yes it is over there just because of the people who are moving towards beaches to visit those areas another point is now is cpec that is the trade route then we have low population density in the coastal areas why because they have a very limited kind of facilities very limited kind of facilities just because of which they have a low population density they have the facilities over there present but very limited the fishing is a major profession of the people living in the coastal areas next we have the last one is the transport so let me move towards the transport sea transport activities are there like if we talk about the trade activities import export is being done through the sea routes through the ships gwadar port as as said over here the gwadar port related to the tourism as well so yes it is a commercial area now becoming a, becoming a commercial area because of the warm port so this is something which is also related with the economy of the coastal area so you uh, can simply find out at what kind of a lifestyle and the economy over there in the coastal areas well this is it with the regions if you people like the video please kindly don't forget to subscribe the channel or like it and do mention the comment box if you think that this video was much useful uh, until next time keep watching with office